We have about 180 acres of combinable crops this year, including 120 acres of wheat, and then some winter oats, winter barley, and some beans to plant in the spring. It's been planted with a weaving sabre tine and a John Deere 750A. This is an X-Day second wheat. This was direct drilled with the sabre tine into a clover living mulch that had persisted through the first wheat. What I found from the couple of years I've been playing around with these clover living mulches is that they do really well in the first wheat and then in the second cereal they tend to fade away a bit. Despite that, there is actually a fair bit hanging on in this field still. Um, and come the springtime, when it gets a bit warmer, that is just going to shoot away. This year after combining, I came into this field with a Vadstad Rapid and stitched in a bit of mustard with the aim to graze sheep on it before the next wheat was planted. It went in nicely with the Rapid, but then sat there for a week or two before it had any rain. Once it did get a splash and germinated, it shot away. The sheep then came onto the field for a couple of weeks in the second half of September before it was sprayed off and the following wheat was drilled in. This field is a first wheat into a new clover living mulch. So this field, we took a cut of silage in August and then sprayed it off in September, spread some compost on it, and then it was direct drilled in October using a John Deere 750A. In this field, we've got a three-way blend of Costello, X Days and Graham growing. It's a first wheat following a clover silage lay. Um, and as you can see, we've managed to keep a hell of a lot of the clover persisting as a living mulch in the wheat. So this is the third year we've done this now. Um, and this is the strongest the clover's been for the time of year. So it will be interesting to see how this field goes on. Annoyingly in this field, we've got a fair bit of ryegrass that's managed to evade the glyphosate. So hopefully we'll be able to get on top of that with a herbicide in the spring. Last year in the living mulch, we applied a nitrogen rate of 57 kilos a hectare and we managed to get yields in the sort of 10 ton a hectare region. So I don't think we'll be going much higher than that this year. We might do some trials whereby we do a tram line at 60 odd, a tram line at 30 and then a tram line at zero nitrogen um, and see if there's any difference. And then with a bit of luck at harvest time, it will look like this. So this field is an X day second wheat. Uh, the first wheat we chopped the straw um, and then I drilled in a mustard buckwheat phacelia catch crop. Here's the catch crop in the first week of October, just before it's sprayed off. And then the second wheat was planted with a John Deere 750A. You can see the chopped straw and the long stubble's done a great job of uh, keeping the soil shielded from the rain all winter. So we cut the stubble high and then chopped the remainder of it. This is so we didn't end up with a mat of chopped straw. And the John Deere's done a really good job of getting through all this trash.
This is some Muscani winter oats uh, following wheat. After combining this field had the works really, um, we went through it with a sumo low detergent subsoiler. Um, we then spread a good dose of compost on it and then it had a catch crop. The catch crop was drilled on the 17th of August into basically no moisture at all. Like everything we planted in the summer though, it surprised us and came really well. And then the sabre tine did a really good job of getting the oats into it. This was the last field on the farm that we ever let out for potatoes. Um, and that was two years ago now. And we still had a fair bit of historic compaction from the growing and harvesting of those potatoes. So for that reason, we decided to subsoil it. Um, and this was the only field on the farm this autumn that we did subsoil. We drilled these at 115 kilos a hectare, which is quite a low seed rate. But after drilling the oats last year at similar seed rate, we've uh, gone for it again this year. In this field, we've got Tardis winter barley following wheat. We started drilling this barley um, with the sabre tine. Um, we did the headlands and then decided to stop because there was so much trash. Um, it wasn't passing through the tines very nicely. So then we did the rest of the field with the John Deere. So this bit was drilled with the John Deere. And then this bit was drilled with a sabre tine. So in the end, it turned out there wasn't actually a lot of difference. So this is all that's left of the catch drops now. Just a few mustard stalks. You probably notice that none of our crops are that forward and this is absolutely fine. This is because they were direct drilled and planted fairly late in mid-October sort of time. It just means that the leaves aren't sitting there over winter getting full of disease. Which, if all goes to plan, should allow us to cut out the use of a T0 and T1 fungicide at least. We'll probably go on with an early dose of 10 to 15 kilos of nitrogen um, end of February sort of time. Going on with smaller and more frequent doses of fert should result in a healthier plant and less fungicide use. So in this field, we've got a herbal lay that we direct drilled into a summer cover crop. Now this field was supposed to go into spring barley, um, but we hadn't forward bought fertilizer for the barley. And at about the time we should have been planting it, fert was about 800 quid a ton. So we decided against that and just planted a fertility building summer cover crop instead. In the mix, we included stuff like vetch, mustard, phacelia, sunflowers, chicory, and a hell of a lot more. The herbal lay was then direct drilled into the summer cover crop without the use of any glyphosate. Not using any glyphosate to terminate the summer cover has meant we've ended up with a few weeds in the herbal lay. But that's not the end of the world because we've carried over a lot of desirable species from the summer cover crop. You can see we've got loads of vetches and clover that have survived from the cover crop. There's plenty of chicory. And then there's a few bits like phacelia and mustard that we wouldn't necessarily want in a herbal lay, but they're not gonna do any harm. So I'm really pleased how this has turned out. Um, in a couple of months, we'll get some ewes and lambs out onto it. I'll do some more updates on the cereals and the clover living mulches as the year goes.